Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference was the biggest news in tech this week, and they tried really hard to make it entertaining, and they succeeded in trying really hard. I'm Mehmet Short. This is a special WWDC episode of Knee of the Curve. Look at this production quality. I don't know if they pieced together drone shots with crane shots or just perfectly flew this drone into the building, but the whole presentation was peppered with awesome shots like this. It looks like they hired Sam Mendes, the director from the movie 1917, to direct this year's WWDC. If only they could have gotten the same casting director. This is gonna be amazing. Powerful improvements to groups. In dance, we combine data from the accelerometer and the gyroscope. We'd like to share a couple of them with you today. Wow, I'm super excited to watch Foundation when it comes to Apple TV Plus next year. These people are not actors. And when every incremental advancement is presented like it's groundbreaking. We've gone even further this year by giving you one place to get at all your controls. We've brought Control Center to the Mac. It feels a little gross. I felt the same way watching WrestleMania 2020. Give me a hell yeah. Hell yeah! What? Anyway, whoever they did get to direct this was obviously way too afraid to tell the Apple bigwigs to just dial it back a notch. There's no one here, it's just you and me. Also, do these need to be shot in 8K? Actors and models don't even want to be shot at 4K. At what resolution does it just become rude? Still, I think the production quality might have been the best thing about this year's presentation. Although having a crowd does help when you're playing it in the background because it lets you know when something cool was announced. But if this year had been live, I think even the applause would have sounded sarcastic when they announced all the innovations to iOS 14. Wouldn't it be great if there were a way to organize all of those apps without doing a thing? Well, this year we're doing just that with something called the App Library. That's an Android feature, but you have to clap or they won't validate your parking. An app clip is a small part of an app, and with just a tap, you can launch the app clip. I know I'm just a seat filler, but Android! Check this out. When I swipe to go home, the video automatically goes into picture in picture. They won't let us out unless we get the clap sound just right. I'm just gonna tap and hold on the weather widget, and I can drag it out of today view and onto my home screen. Are we really still clapping for this? Windows Mobile. Look, I love Apple, so I'm not complaining. It's nice to have all the customization, but it's just funny because nobody that actually takes the time to watch this announcement is fooled that Apple invented all this functionality. Like, it's like if Eminem said he invented rap or Elvis invented rock and roll or like California claimed the credit for Mexican food. Apple's like, Do you ever have a feeling in your stomach that feels like pain? We here at Apple identify with that feeling and we've come up with an amazing solution. It's called iFood. You guys didn't invent food. Stop it. Also, check out our amazing new slogan. Dude, you're getting it. That's not yours either, that's the Dell guy. Okay, so this stuff isn't new, but it still could be cool. Just tell me what's cool about it, and if you could do it in the tone my mom uses when she's trying to set me up on a date, that'd be great. The best way to discover app clips will be with a new Apple-designed app clip code. So when you see one, you'll know that there's an app clip waiting for you. They incorporate both a visual code and NFC, so you tap on them or scan them with the camera to bring up an app clip. We want to be able to use app clips everywhere, so we made it possible for apps like Yelp, which support multiple businesses, to create app clip experiences for each of the places they work with. That is a super convenient way to fill your phone up with tons of apps you'll never use. But what I'm really looking forward to is when every checkout counter is filled with a bazillion app icons, which I guess is why you'll need the app library that automatically filters your most used apps into categories. So you might want to be even more careful who you let see that screen. Oh, you have a lot of hobbies. CNN though. Cool. Widgets let you customize the info you see on your home screen and picture in picture lets you multitask because being on your phone isn't enough of a distraction. You have to be on an app, 
while texting a friend, while watching a video, while driving off a cliff. Siri also got upgraded, but the big thing is on-device dictation. Leveraging the power of the neural engine, we are now able to run dictation on device. No information is sent to the cloud, so everything you say stays private. So great. Now you can dictate your manifesto or plans to kill your boss without worrying about it getting sent to the cloud. Finally, dictation even Jeffrey Epstein would have used. Hey Siri, remind me to burn off my fingerprints at 3 p.m. on July 4th. Okay. Your reminder is set for the 4th of July, 2020. Thanks, Siri. And it even works with their new app, Google Translate. I mean, translate. The translations happen privately on device. Just turn the phone to landscape to open conversation mode. It can work completely offline, keeping your conversations private. I'm guessing this is gonna be the translation app of choice for anyone traveling solo to Thailand. Really though, if any phone company actually cared about privacy, they'd let us air gap our microphones and cameras. As it is now, your phone could be hacked to be always recording you. We need a hard switch like for vibrate mode that cuts any electrical connection to the mic and camera. It's crazy that as a society, we just decided to willingly invite listening devices into our homes. I mean, they're everywhere. Google just rewarded me for being a YouTube member and decided to send me a Nest. They're like, congratulations, as a reward for your patronage, we've decided to surveil you. Don't worry, the service is complimentary. They also updated Memojis. Thank God. There are over 1 trillion ways to customize your identity with Memoji. In iOS 14, we're adding even more ways to create your look with over 20 new hair and headwear styles to let you reflect your hobby, profession, and personality. This is awesome. Now there are over a trillion ways for me to totally ignore this feature. Let me know in the comments if I'm alone here, but after the first week this was announced, I have yet to send or receive a single one of these. They even put the ability to put a mask on your fake avatar. So the fake you could feel as oppressed as the real you? This is so weird. Instead of putting a mask on my Memoji, I'm just changing it to this. EV charger routing, I'm excited about this. You can find out how to route your trip to get to all the charging stations. This is a very cool addition to Apple Maps. I'm assuming it'll work with Teslas, but for some reason they only advertised BMW and Ford. It's like a bar saying, we have all the best beers. We have Pabst and Schlitz and all the best beers. You can find us on our website just by searching Alta Vista or Bing or maybe just Ask Jeeves. All the search engines. They also strangely said this about car keys. Or transforming your relationship with your car by rethinking car keys. Yeah, they rethought it all the way up to two years ago when the Model 3s started doing it. Hey, for once, they're not copying Google. Next, they'll be copying Nikola. Something that's interesting about the iPad OS is, I'm just kidding, there's nothing. They announced some things. Uh, it's just not interesting. The pencil works better. That's, that's it. With Apple TV. Honestly, skipped it. Now, let's talk about some big changes coming to Mac OS. Rounded corners and new app icons in case you're incredibly easily impressed. The big announcement was when Tim Cook let the cat out of the bag, they'll be breaking up with Intel. Mac is transitioning to our own Apple Silicon. But the worst part is, this is how Intel found out too. Ruthless. When we look ahead, we envision some amazing new products and transitioning to our own custom silicon is what will enable us to bring them to life. Arms. That's what Apple left Intel for. Can't say it hasn't happened to me. Intel, my advice is just go out and stick your chips in the first company that comes along. Does Xerox still make stuff? Put it in a Xerox machine and just swipe right on everything for a while. And don't call or text. It's pathetic. Apple's playing it like they're being super adult about it, saying the transition will take two years, but then they said the first Macs with new arms will be on the market by the end of the year. That's like giving your spouse divorce papers and saying, hey, you know, read these over, no rush, take your time, but I am seeing someone, and she's pregnant, and she's moving in. So again, no rush, but if you could move into the garage, that'd be a big help, because we're gonna be boning real loud. Again, take your time, I just want you to be comfortable. 
The big question for Apple is, will Pro apps be able to run on these new low-powered chips? And the answer seems to be yes. At least it did in the conveniently pre-recorded announcement video. They ran Adobe apps, Maya 3D, and showed Final Cut Pro playing back three separate 4K streams at one time, all on the same chip that powers the current iPad Pro. Which is pretty cool. So, okay, Apple, you win. I'll be back next year. But your acting better have gotten better. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you leave a comment to help the algorithm, I will most likely respond. But the best thing is to share it on social media or text it to a friend. It's more personal. They'll watch it that way. Huge thanks to the patrons and YouTube members funding the channel. You guys are amazing. If you like tech news and jokes, consider joining these awesome people. Thanks to Ryan Stout and Jeremy Huntley again for coming through in a pinch this time. Couldn't have done it without you. Check out their work in the description. When you subscribe, hit the bell to get notified or join me on Discord where I post links to all my scripts so you can actually watch them develop and pitch jokes. In fact, Brad Zone from Discord got a joke on this episode, so thanks, Brad. Find me on Twitter, find me on Instagram, or just click one of these awesome videos to stay up to date on how technology is changing everything. Thanks for watching. Peace.